Hello everyone, hope you're having the greatest of days today. Welcome to the Film Insight channel. For today's video, we're going to discuss some more of the worst bars to be featured on Bar Rescue and reveal how they're doing now. So, sit back, relax, and without further ado, let's get right into the content guys. O'Banion's Bar and Grill First Season 3 episode, John Taffer pays a visit to O'Banion's Bar and Grill to bring him back on its feet. Purchased in 2005 by Jerry with the help of his brother Dave and Steve, they were met with a decent amount of success in the beginning. Effortlessly making $25,000 a month for the first two years, the co-owners decided to leave Jerry to manage it all on his own. However, since he enjoyed the party scene, Jerry began to drink on the job and would even buy drinks for his patrons. What's more, he makes the staff extremely uncomfortable and drives customers away with his unprofessional behavior. Fed up with seeing their business slowly die, Steve and Dave called out to Taffer for his professional guidance. Upon his eventual arrival, Taffer talks with the two co-owners about the bar's issues and they reveal that they invested $320,000 from the banks collectively with their homes as collateral. Placing the blame completely on Jerry, the owners expose the fact that they only have 7 months left before they'll be forced to close down. Hoping to give Jerry a piece of their mind, Taffer and the two other co-owners head straight into the bar to confront him. Things get pretty heated when Steve and Dave tell their friend that he's dead weight and that they're planning to take the business back from him since he only has a 20% stake. Kicking him out in the process, Jerry doesn't leave quietly and drunkenly curses all the way to the parking lot. Leaving and returning the following day, Taffer holds a meeting with the staff who express that they hate how their boss's behavior is robbing them of their salary. Surprisingly, Jerry attended this meeting sober and claimed that he's acting this way because his partners abandoned him. While there isn't any excuse for how awful he's been as an owner, Steve and Dave agree that they need to spend more time supporting him. Later on, Taffer brings in his experts including renowned mixologist Trevor Fry and chef Nick Liberato who inspect the area. Starting with the kitchen, Liberato notices that the grease trap is completely full and smells dreadful since it's growing harmful bacteria. After deep cleaning the area and training the staff on the basics of mixing and cooking, Taffer was ready to launch a stress test. Even though things got pretty hectic with the staff getting overwhelmed and tables getting the wrong orders, Jerry managed to get by without drinking and tried his very best. Impressed with his willingness to change, the co-owners promised that they wouldn't buy him out of the business. Following some training, renaming the place to Sorties Tavern, and giving the place an aesthetic overhaul, the bar's future was seeming bright. Post Bar Rescue, the owners revealed that their drink sales went up by 20% and their food by 100, which is amazing. Thankfully, Jerry continued to stay sober on the job and was getting along with his staff unlike before. Unfortunately, due to medical reasons, the owners were forced to sell the place in 2016, but it's still being run under the same name. While the bar had pretty negative reviews after the rescue, this changed drastically under the new ownership. MT Bottle In another Season 3 episode, John Taffer heads over to MT Bottle in Murfreesboro, Tennessee to rescue it from closure. Owned by a man named Tracy, he opened this beer-only bar back in 2008, hiring his wife Gina as the manager. Using the sex appeal of his bartenders to get customers in, his business has been pretty successful. Though, since beer is the only thing they offer, many patrons started to bring their own brown bag liquor. Considering that they're $250,000 in debt and are operating without a liquor license, they're on the verge of closure. Not knowing how else to proceed, the owner called out to Taffer and his team for some much needed help. When he finally arrives alongside Big Smo, a country rap artist who got a start at the bar and an expert chef named Stretch, they point out that the exterior looks like a shop entrance. Watching through CCTV cameras, they take notice of Gina who's wearing a shirt with nipple rings which isn't exactly something a manager should be wearing. Hoping to get a better idea of the customer experience, Taffer sends in two locals named Rick and Jim for recon. Since the bar oddly has a bring your own booze policy, the spies bring their own which is already costing the business revenue. One way the bar seems to make money is by getting the bartenders to expose their chests for $5 which is so trashy. As the spies share their liquor with other customers, taking away even more potential business, the owners don't seem to care and are playing darts. Fed up with what he was seeing, Taffer heads straight into the bar and confronts the negligent owners. After some discussion, Taffer learns that they can't pay for a liquor license so they have to rely on BYOB to bring customers in. Clearly, the owners seem pretty troubled about the state of the bar, so Taffer promised to use his money to get them a liquor license. Taking a look around, the famous rescuer finds a weird contraption that gets rid of bottles and cans and sends them directly to the basement. What's more, Taffer finds a pool of water that looks extremely polluted and stinks which could be a possible hazard. Insisting that they get the water tested, the bar rescue host threatens to leave if it's black mold. Holding a staff meeting the following day, Taffer reveals that they didn't have any black mold and gives Gina the new liquor license. Introducing his experts soon after, they teach the clueless staff how to bartend and cook basic meals. Launching a stress test after everyone was brought up to speed, it's safe to say that it was a complete disaster. Aside from Tracy walking out mid-service and leaving his staff with an overwhelming amount of work, the drinks were awful and the kitchen floor was flooded so the bar was shut down. 
Following a chat with the owners the next day, they promised to step up in any way they could, which was a step in the right direction. Finally, Taffer trained the staff even further, changed the bar's name to Bottles and Cans, brightened up the bar with beautiful colors and improved the decor. Weeks after being on the show, the business was set to make $30,000 that month, which was a solid improvement. Thankfully, Tracy started to act like an actual owner and made sure to follow through with Taffer's changes. Sadly, they were stripped of their liquor license and ended up closing down in December of 2019. Tragically, the owner passed away several months later and the business was sold to new owners in January of 2020. Fairways Golf and Grill As our final entry, we're going to discuss a bar that John Taffer hoped to rescue from closure called Fairways Golf and Grill. Owned by Richard Jordan, he purchased the bar after retiring from his decade-long career in finance. For whatever reason, Jordan thought it would be a good idea to drop $40,000 on a golf simulator for the bar, but it made no money. Testing out a whole slew of other marketing strategies like bingo, nothing really seemed to boost their business. Since he was barely making any money, he was forced to go back to being an accountant to keep fairways afloat. Being $150,000 in debt and at risk of losing his business for good, Jordan called out to Taffer for some help. Upon his eventual rival with health inspector Steve Blavat, they take a look at some footage of the kitchen. Completely disgusted with what they see, they notice that there's grease everywhere and leaky pipes. This time around, rather than send in random people for recon, Taffer uses his expert chef Brian Duffy and mixologist Phil Wills. Soon after entering, they order everything on the menu, which shocks the manager Michelle, but she complies and calmly makes all the drinks. On the other hand, the restaurant chef Kevin starts freaking out and fails to realize that he's cross-contaminating. After trying the beer that they ordered, Wills was so repulsed by the taste of what he drank that he threw up several times in the bathroom. Appalled by what he just saw, Taffer heads into the bar with the health inspector and they confront Jordan about his poor practices. Through some digging, they figured out that the reason why Wills got so sick was because the beer had long been expired. Heading into the kitchen later on, they notice that not only is the floor filthy, but so is the fryer, pots, and air system. To make matters even worse, the walk-in has mold on both the inside and outside, which could be a potential hazard, so the famous rescuer has it tested. Leaving and returning the following day, Taffer holds a staff meeting and reveals that the bar is safe and forces everyone to deep clean the area. Once everything was completely clean, Taffer's experts were brought in to train the staff for the upcoming stress test. Starting the stress test soon after, it was a complete mess overall since the bartenders made tons of errors. What's more, the kitchen was just as bad since Kevin sent out food at a sluggish pace and even confused the servers, leading to them delivering food to the wrong tables. Due to the immensely poor feedback from patrons, Taffer disappointedly had to shut things down. Hosting another meeting with the staff later on, Kevin is called out for his lack of skill in the kitchen and justifiably gets fired by Michelle. Considering the fact that they finally discarded their dead weights, James, the assistant cook, was given Kevin's position. Fast forward to the end of the episode after the Fairways team was trained even further, Taffer was finally ready to move into the renovations. Renaming the place to Brew You, the famous rescuer gave the business a coffee and beer bar theme and gave it a complete makeover. Post Bar Rescue, the owner reported that the bar was earning $5,000 a month, which is definitely a step up. Unfortunately, the bar's debts were way too high and they were forced to close down in December of 2014. Well, that'll be all for today's video here on the channel. I do hope you enjoyed, and if you did, be sure to drop a massive like down below and comment your thoughts. Subscribe for more content like this and turn on those sweet bell notifications for instant access to our content. See you in the next one guys!